CataractCoach.com. Capsule rip in less than one second. This is how to successfully recover from this capsular rip. So here's a video of Willie Camp from Malaysia showing us a beautiful technique of using a needle to decompress these intumescent white cataracts. So entering there, decompressing it, taking out that intumescent fluid, and now a normal capsulorexis can be completed. So that's how it should be done. But this case is gonna be a little different. Let me show you our case. Now we zoom in here. Patient's about 30 years old, diabetic white cataract, and here's what's different. We filled the out with viscoelastic, and if I touch, look how pressurized that anterior capsule is. This capsular bag is totally pressurized. Now, there's not a layer of fluid like we normally see here. Normally, you'd have an endonucleus that's solid, surrounded by intumescent fluid. But in this case, what we have is all of the fibers are swollen, so we're getting the eye pressure high. We hopefully want to have a very high pressure in the anterior chamber. We're going to poke in with the needle now and quickly aspirate, and let's see if we can achieve that same technique here. Now, we just have that one incision. We poke in, and boom. Oh, my goodness. What has happened? Where's the fluid? All the fibers are swollen. Wow, it's still swollen. Let's look at one quarter speed. As soon as that needle touches that lens capsule, it rips uncontrollably. That's how pressurized it was. That's tough. Let's look at one tenth speed. Just as soon as it enters, it's done. You can't even control it. So what could we have done differently? Maybe used an alternate device to make a capsule opening, buzz in with a phaco probe, use a femtosecond laser, use some other plasma cutting device. There are a lot of options here, but even those may not have worked. So now we'll go in here, cutting with the scissors, and we're going to try create the remainder of the capsule axis here. And you can see it still wants to run out. We're having to pull it in quite a bit just to help control it. So there we go. Now we want to make very careful, be very sure that we don't cause that rip on the capsule to extend to the posterior capsule because that'll be an issue. Now the lens is soft. We're going with just the IA probe to aspirate the material out. Now could we have placed the needle on the IA probe and then go in there aspirating? Yes, but you may have had the same issue because you may not have been able to decompress that lens fast enough to prevent that cap's rip, which happened in much less than one second. So all the lens material comes out pretty easily, spending a little bit of extra time here cleaning up any of the residual lens cortex, being very cautious, okay to do a YAG laser in another point in time, in the future, but let's not damage the bag anymore. So there's the cohesive viscoelastic filling up the capsule bag. Now lens placement, you can do a single piece of lens, you can use a three piece lens. The patient's getting a monofocal lens and we're gonna opt for the single piece design. And so we'll place that single piece design here in the capsule bag. And we're gonna orient the haptics so that they're in the area of greatest overlap of that capsule. And that's going to be very helpful. So making sure we put this in nice and slowly. Here comes the lens. Delivering it in there and opening the haptics. And we don't want to rotate the lens much. Keep it right there. And there we have a nice overlap. You can see there nasally, the top part of your screen there. That looks fantastic. Now, we may have to trim the capsule a little bit more. So we're going to go back in here, take out our viscoelastic. It looks pretty good, but there, just under the phaco probe, maybe there's a little too much of that lens capsule remaining. So we're going to go back and trim that down also. But everything looks pretty reasonable here. This patient's going to have a nice outcome. I'm going to put a little more viscoelastic here to give us some control, and we're going to go and try to cut it with scissors. That's hard to access because it's sub-incisional. So just use a cystotome, a bent needle, and let's have a little break there in the lens capsule. And then using our forceps, we're going to just trim this off a little bit, just to have a little bit less overlap. That looks pretty darn good. Now let's finally remove all the viscoelastic, wash out any little bit of lens material, and we can close this case up. So beautiful outcome at the end here, but wow, what an unusual case. I think the big differentiator here is that instead of having a layer of milky intumescent fluid, 
the whole lens was just super swollen and highly pressurized. And we saw that at the very beginning, prior to even starting, when we touched the anterior lens capsule with the 27-gauge blunt cannula, we could tell that it was a very highly pressurized lens capsule. So we'll do this patient's other eye in the near future, and we'll try a different technique, and we'll compare and see what the differences are going to be. CataractCoach.com Preventing the capsule rip approach to the highly pressurized white cataract. Let me show you what happened to the first eye. We poked in with the lens, and boom, it splits like that. Holy cow, we're in a world of trouble. That's video 980 if you want to check that out. So now this is the same patient, the second eye. And it's the same thing. Look, when we touch that anterior lens capsule, oh my goodness, look how pressurized it is. The whole lens capsule is pressurized. The pressure in the capsule bag is much higher than the pressure in the anterior chamber. It's a white cataract, but there's no liquefied intumescent fluid. The whole lens is swollen. So we're going to buzz in with a phaco probe and create a central opening. Pow! Right there. Now, ideally, you want this phaco probe to be almost aiming towards the optic nerve in the eye, very much aiming straight down so that you get a nice round hole in the lens capsule. So here, a little more viscoelastic being put in there. And we're going to buzz with the probe. And oh, there's an opening. Oh, my goodness, it's already ripping out. What should we do? Keep the phaco probe in the eye. That initial buzz was okay, but didn't create a perfectly round opening because the resident didn't have the round tip fully touching the lens capsule. But we have the infusion pressure set very high, a very high bottle height, infusion pressure of 95 millimeters of mercury. That's going to help. So we'll keep that phaco probe in the eye with one hand and with the other hand using a cytotome through the paracentesis to create some sort of small anterior lens capsule opening. Now this does not have to be round. It doesn't even have to be centered. All it has to be is continuous. By making it continuous, it's not going to run out. It's not going to go out towards the nonular support. So if we can finish that up like this, that looks pretty good, just a tiny bit left. Let's get some viscoelastic in there. Quickly get the forceps and quickly pull that centrally. Woo, we did it, look at that, okay. Now we've got a kidney bean-shaped opening. That's okay. Don't worry about it. As long as it's round or continuous and curvilinear, there's no edges that are gonna run out. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It doesn't have to be five millimeters. It just has to be enough to be strong. Now we can go inside there using the IA probe. This lens is soft, it's not dense. And removing the whole lens just with the IA probe, much better. Cortex removal coming up here, we can do a bimanual approach, which is going to be helpful because it's a small rexus. This is not going to be the final rex. We're not going to leave it like this. But we want to clean up as much of the lens cortex as we can. So again, doing a bimanual approach is that transformer IA handpiece. Cleaning this up pretty nicely. That all looks pretty good. So once we get the eye well in the capsule bag, of course, then we can enlarge the rexus. So cleaning up as best as we can here, a little bit of capsule polishing. You don't have to go crazy here. Just do a beautiful job. So filling up the bag, again, going in, trying to get out a little bit more of this lens material. But you know what? Let's just get the lens inside. So the eye well, of course, is going to be a single piece of acrylic lens with a six millimeter optic. So when we get that lens inside the eye, here it comes. Deliver it. Make sure it goes in the capsule bag. And now we can see that, okay, the rexus, I will admit, is irregular and small. You could leave the case just like this and say, hey, it's okay. It'll be fine. And it would be. But we can do another step. Look at this. We can use our small scissors here to cut a nick in that anterior lens capsule. Use the forceps because the eye is filled with viscoelastic. There's a lot more control here with the eye well already in the capsule bag. And grab that and look at that. We're going to enlarge that capsule rexus. This is going to be a beautiful outcome. So what we did differently in this case is we used the phaco probe to boom punch a hole in the central lens capsule, aspirate out any of that the liquid that was there of the lens cortex, 
but more importantly, to set the infusion pressure at 95 millimeters of mercury. So that phacal probe is in the eye, it helped prevent that high intralenticular pressure from causing issues. Now, there were suggestions on our channel of saying, hey, use a larger 18-gauge needle instead of the 25 or 27-gauge. It wouldn't have made a difference. There was an idea of using Mac, um, mannitol, intravenous mannitol. That would have dried out his vitreous, but it would not have changed the intralenticular pressure. So I think the best solution of all is what you just witnessed. Go inside, puncture a hole in the lens capsule with the phaco probe. Hopefully it'll be round. Keep the infusion pressure up and get a baby rexus done first. Take out the cataract and then you can enlarge the rexus. Cataractcoach.com. Rock the nucleus with needle aspiration. This is for those milky white intumescent cataracts. So here's the cataract. You can see it's milky white. It's intumescent, so it's fluid filled. The cortex has liquefied. So we'll put in a tripan blue dye stain right here. That's great. Let's just fast forward a little bit. Diluting the, the stain now with our anesthetic injection. And then we're going to get a good fill of viscoelastic. We'll put a dispersive viscoelastic to really fill up the anterior chamber and pressurize the anterior chamber. We want the pressure in the AC to be a little higher than the pressure within the capsular bag. That's going to help prevent capsular run out and that dreaded Argentinian flag sign. So here's the viscoelastic going in. It's the dispersive agent. And we want to aim for a pressure of at least 30 millimeters mercury. You can just judge that by touching the cornea. And now what we're going to do is switch over and we'll get a sharp 27 gauge needle on a 3cc syringe, which is about half filled with balanced salt solution. So that needle can also be slightly bent for easier access. Just make sure that it still flows normally. So there's the needle. We're going to poke into the center of the lens capsule, right in the center. Stab in, and you'll see as soon as we poke in, milk will come out. That's the lens milk, the liquefied cortex. And then we aspirate. And we can aspirate a lot of that liquid. Now, here's where you have to continue. So we aspirated some of it, but that's just the anterior liquefied cortex. There's more behind the lens nucleus. So to access that, we go back inside the eye, go in the whole opening we've made, rock the nucleus back and forth to release more of that milky fluid, and now re-aspirate. This has now really and completely depressurized the capsular bag, and we can proceed with the rest of the case relatively normally, and we've really minimized that risk of an Argentinian flag sign. Let's look at the diagrams. There's the nucleus, which is very dense. It's surrounded by liquefied cortex all around because all the cortex is liquefied. When we poke in with the needle, lens milk comes out because the pressure in the bag is high. And then we'll start to aspirate using that syringe, pulling back on it. We'll get out all that anterior liquefied cortex and the nucleus then moves up and blocks the flow. So we need to rock that nucleus back and forth to help release all of the liquefied cortex from even behind the nucleus. Now the capsule bag is completely depressurized and all the liquefied cortex is fully removed. It's much easier to proceed with the case now. So now that we've removed all that liquefied lens cortex, we can make the incision here and do the capsule rexus. So the incision is being made. We've of course sped up this video and you'll see it's complete control during capsular axis creation. The resident's able to create a very nice capsular axis without any issues here. So grabbing here with the forceps, bringing it around, and there's no pressure to push towards the zonules. Like normally you'd have this rexus wanting to run out because the posterior pressure of the nucleus due to the liquefied cortex that was trapped. But we removed all that. So now let's just fast forward to the end of the case here. The, the resident will chop the uh, nucleus into many pieces and aspirate it down, and the rest of the case just goes beautifully. So this chop technique is very easy to perform in a white cataract because the visualization is great. The blue dye shows you the capsule edge, and then the nucleus is very white. Here's the end of the case, lens in the capsule bag. That looks great. This patient's going to be really happy. So remember, intumescent white cataract, rock that nucleus. CataractCoach.com Cataract Quiz 
What if you do not decompress an intumescent white cataract? What happens? What's the challenge? So I'll show you two different cases. This is case one. Watch carefully. Look at the lens cortex, the lens capsule. As we inject our viscoelastic, you can see there's movement in that lens cortex because it's liquefied. Hence, it's an entumescent white cataract. It's fluid filled. So normally here I decompress, but we're gonna try to avoid that just to see what'll happen. Let's make our main incision here. And can we do a regular capsorexis? Now, where there's going to be some pressure pushing forwards and therefore causing the capsule to want to run out. So, I'll we'll start at the rexus. So far, so good. But look what happens. As we start to tear the rexus, I'm bringing it inwards. It has a tendency to want to run out. So much so that right about here, I'm going to have to resort to the little maneuver just to rescue it, to bring it back in. And the longer we take, the more this posterior pressure pushes forwards and risks a run out of the caps rectus. So even here at the very end, look at the direction in which we're pulling. We're trying to get it completed, and somehow we manage, woo, finally. All right, it worked, and the patient did great. But let's show you a different way, a better way. Here's a different patient now. So on this patient, we're filling up the capsule or the anterior chamber to flatten the capsule, and that's a good fill. We've stained the capsule tripen blue dye, we want to put even a little bit more viscoelastic because I want the pressure in the AC to be higher than the intumescent pressure in the bag. Now we're going to get a needle, an empty 27 gauge needle on a 3cc syringe. The syringe can be empty or full of balanced salt solution. We're going to aspirate with this. We're not going to inject. So we're going to poke in the center here, bevel down, look at the position of that bevel, go right in the center of the lens nucleus and poke in and aspirate out, very nice. And that's gonna decompress that capsule bag. We can even rotate the nucleus. Now I've showed you videos of many surgeons using this technique, some Brazilian surgeons. I've shown you my friend, Lucan Michev. He does this beautifully. Lots of surgeons do it this way. It is an important step. So I think for an intumescent white cataract, you either do a double capsule technique or just do like we've shown you here, to decompress it using a needle. Now, with the capsular bag not under pressure, it's very easy to create our normal capsular axis. And watch the forceps here. We can just do things normally. There's a lot of control. There is no pressure. It doesn't want to run out. It's a nice, easy, controlled system. And we're able to create a beautifully round and centered capsular axis. Again, risk of a capsular run out are very, very low here. And now we've completed that and you can see it's an appropriate size, looks great. Remember in these cases, there's not much need for hydrodissection because the lens cortex is already liquefied. In fact, in this eye, as we inject some fluid in there, you see a lot of it comes out. So we'll finish up this case just to show you our technique is going to be a chop method. Chop that nucleus into smaller pieces and emulsify it down and everything will go just beautifully. So we'll speed up this portion of the video. So when you have these intumescent white cataracts, remember the best way is to decompress the capsular bag. Release the pressure that's built up in that capsular bag and you can do that with needle decompression. We've shown you ways to use phaco aspiration with the phaco probe or a needle on the IA probe. We've even showed you the double caps rexus technique of making a baby rexus first and then finishing it with a larger rexus. But whatever you do, do it safely and give your patient a beautiful outcome like we've seen in this video here. Thanks for watching. Check out our website, cataractcoach.com.